just a quick one guys when i say that but this is a quick one i was just watching back one of the lives that i was doing when i saw all of uh this in here and i was trying to work out what's going to be the quickest way to take all of this out next so i'm praying and hoping that this is now going to move and come out through my ear and drain this out through my ear so i don't I, I'm, I'm sort of struggling because i could do with channeling everything out through my ear so i have actually got some hoopy candles somewhere i think but i've never actually done this on myself so um and i don't think i've actually had it done sort of properly i'm not sure i've 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 experimented in so many things. You've got no idea when it comes to living with a chronic pain condition, how many books you read, how many speakers you listen to, how many people, because you're constantly looking, because it's a condition that they say has no cure. I believe that that means incurable from within. Incurable. So that's my sort of, is it pathology? that's my sort of principles that's my sort of direction so i believe now literally tomorrow morning i will wake up with quite a gluey horrible ear so i'm going to need to make sure that i've got i'm actually out of cotton buds which is really not good and cotton wool and all of that sort of stuff so that's really not good so i could do with literally draining all of this up i did think about the nose but someone with me i really don't like water up my nose or anything like that and it makes me panic and it would be really really horrible to bring this through my mouth because i would hear i would i would taste i would taste it so basically this tooth got cracked at the back so there is a physical outside happening but there is also an internal happening as i explained on my last video shiloh's trying to go to sleep and elijah now wants to bang drums um so i've got an external and an internal force going on one is i am not living to my true ideal day my schedule my plan my lifestyle i am in hell basically for me total fucking hell it is my worst plan for christmas ever like seriously like i know full well that i will not do any of the things that i do and love and things because it's so fucking hard to do when you're living in a completely different life from the day you were born all the way to 43 and it's like uh you know so for someone like me I'm not in line with who I truly am. And also, I'm in a situation as well, like say I had gone to London to the Santa thing, yeah? There'd be lots of familiar faces. There'd be lots of people that I know. There'd be lots of people that watch me. Lots of people that I sort of <clears throat> watch them. Um, and it's this whole network that exists in a metaphysical world, yeah? The thing we have to ask ourselves has is how long has AI virtual world been really, really going on? And do we need to now bring in AI to do what doctors can't do with people like me? And am I willing to be experimental to this? Or do I want to stick with Mother Earth, Mother Nature, natural laws of the universe and not conform to the ways of the world? But by the renewal of my mind my heart and my own true values and belief system see i'm moving it now i can feel it now i know i schedule myself to um sunrise sunset memories in the middle all around the world there is a time delay <laughs> yeah Sometimes when I'm living, people are getting up in the morning. Sometimes people are going to bed. Sometimes people are on the same time frame. A lot of people are picking their kids up from school as I'm doing stuff. Some people are rushing out to get for school as I'm sitting having breakfast. Um, and all of us live very different. Now let's bring this to education. Timetables. We all understand a timetable when we're at school. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah? We all understand evening, Kelly. So are we evening? Yes, we are late evening here in the UK. So it's probably coming into about nine o'clock. If, if Elijah's wanting to start drumming, then it's probably coming into about nine o'clock. 
I remember being a kid where we all sat in front of the TV and we watched the nine o'clock news and the 10 o'clock and everything was so meant to be set for the boogeyman late at night and the film Footloose that said that, you know, nightclubs would bring debauchery and all oh, the nice girls love a sailor and all the cha-cha and all of this sort of stuff. And I remember having to pick up one of my friends, uh, Evening Claire. Are you all just bringing me to the evening? Kelly, it's evening time right now. It's, 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 it's that time where I should be laying in the fucking bath with no technology, absolutely nothing, with my little toddlers in bed. Oh, Danielle's got some good news. Go on, Daniela, what's your good news? Are you seeing the kids for Christmas? Give me lots of hearts if you're seeing the kids this Christmas. In fact, all of you, if you've got your kids with you this Christmas, give me lots and lots and lots of hearts. And if you're seeing your kids um, this Christmas, give me lots of hearts. And if you're going to be on your own this Christmas, just send a, a heart with a care on it. So I'm waiting to see what Daniela's good news. For those who don't know Daniela, Daniela does. Um, so when I used to have my Step Up Britain little bracelet on and my forced adoption one, Daniela is the one that... Um... Oh, my goodness, is he really? What university has he chosen? Daniela's son's got a university interview. See, this is where you've got to praise his dad, Daniela. I know it's really fucking hard, and I know, like, sometimes you might think it's a bit of the kick in the teeth, but this is where you've got to remember that us mums, yeah, there's just some things we're not meant to do for the kids. It's the dad's role, and... Um, oh, your daughter, even better. Wow. See, hang on, I am really apologise to people who have got children's names. I know mine's Elijah and Shiloh, but their dad named them. I have this thing with me that I always said, the dad's name the boys and I name the girl. So obviously with Graham, well, obviously the first one, the state terminated, but Daniel, obviously his dad named him and he came from a Catholic family. And then um, I married again to James, whose family was C of E and James named Daniel. And then, obviously, I was with Stephen, and Stephen, we didn't marry. And later, as somebody who was on morphine, wasn't judgmental to somebody with an, as uh, with an abscess on methadone. Obviously, people pulled me to the side to warn me what this actually meant for me is the foreseeable future, and I didn't fucking listen. Even when my friends, who were police officers, who have known me for quite a while, living in Leyland, because I was part of the uh, course rep, departmental rep, faculty rep of um, UCLan, uh, sorry, the University of Central Lancashire. Yes, I got into quite a few other universities, but as a mum, I chose to go local to my kids' school and just went into Preston every day from Leyland. John Moores, Manchester, um, as you know, I still am linked with Oxford and Cambridge because of um, Aaron and Faith being taken and people who have stepped up, so to say, for me as an individual of people who knew me personally before I came into the network where I wrote They've got my kids social services, I've got my kids, what do I do? And Daniela is still here. Daniela is the one who held um, Shiloh, no Elijah, when I was in London. No, I had the double buggy, Shiloh, because Elijah was out with the social workers, funny enough, when we went to the... Um, Baswa investigation into forced adoption and it was the very same room that a police officer stood up and said why let this go another 10 years because in 10 years this is going to be one of the greatest British scandals ever and that was from one of the chief inspectors that stood in that room um Hartfield Hatfield, Herefordshire, doing medicine. Wow, come on, guys. I know it's coming to nine o'clock, not eight o'clock, but you've got to clap for that. Like, this is what you've got to clap for. Like, yes, this is when we stand and applaud at the window and we clap um, for Daniela's daughter, who's got an interview 
for a university to do medicine. Yes, yes, namaste. Yes, 100%. Yes, medicine, cool. Maybe into, uh, let's hopefully see her on this track at some point. So anyway, there should be a lot of university um, people out this Christmas coming out on the streets, helping us all out, out on the streets. Lots of people have got their own brands, their own things that they carry, their own banners that they carry. Um, but there really are people living on the streets, guys, and they're not just crackheads and smackheads. Most of them are a product of our children that were taken from us. Most of them. That's what happens to most of our kids that get taken. Because they come to find us, not thinking that we would even be looking for them. They go to the last thing that they have and then they start from there and that's it. And Alan told you that the other day on video live and he finally, finally found where his mum was only three, two months before, after she died. So home for Christmas, rocks all the time. Um, don't know what you're all up to, don't know what you're doing, but I'm gonna try and bring this up through out my ear and try and clean this out. Um, your mum says she's too old for a Christmas tree, do I report her? Christmas trees, Christmas trees were a pagan thing. Would you really, really wanna cut down trees just to bring into your house and do baubles? I always say maybe this year we could plant a tree in our front garden that becomes one of those sort of Christmassy trees that grows over time and time that we can maybe go out and put lights outside it and tinsel to celebrate it but let's not cut down trees for the sake of this or even kill goodness knows how many turkeys and stuff just like I say just be present over these days 13th and so you can see down on the post the lights that were out here, I don't know if we can still see them. Apparently there's a farm that's put some lights on a bridge and um, one of our networks has, no, they've turned them off. No, it's still there. There you go. Hang on. It's... There you go. Ready? Ready? So if you look at my wall, you'll see where the base of that is, just behind one of our safe families. <laughs> Everybody's battling with something anyway. Just coming into the evening of the last time I was with Liam, Daniel, Aaron and Faith, nine years ago. And tomorrow is that horrible, horrible, horrible day that it's just gone into its little feet formation. So that must be as it's going up over the bridge. So I can see that. I don't know how many miles that is away. Um, hey, pack it in, you two. Excuse me, can you stop it? Shiloh, back to bed. Right, otherwise you're in your beds tonight. They fight over who is the alpha male. And they do. They'll even sit in front of it going, I'm the alpha. And the other one goes, no, I'm the alpha. So then they play and they fight. And if one of them was, one's decent, one's not, one stripped their jamas off. But they'll literally just play like cups and fall asleep together. But it does get out of hand. They need wrestling. I'm taking them on the mats, proper wrestling. It's a bit hard, isn't it? Do you want your boys to be fighters? Do you want your boys to be somebody that ever physically hits their partner? Seriously, if I ever found out any of my kids ever hit their girlfriends, I would, I wouldn't have, I'd have a problem with girlfriends anyway. All my kids are taught and have all been taught. And Liam and Daniel all had a respect ring. It wasn't Liam's fault what happened with that. And one day I'm gonna face her for what she did to my son that day. Um, but, you know, Daniel is still with his partner, he owned, he's, he's got a mortgage, you know, he's graduated from university, he's doing what he loves and what it is that he wants, he's with his partner, you know, obviously the complications will be his wedding with his extracurricular family um, and mum, 
So anyway, I'm going to try and drum this and literally smooth this and try and get this to come. I don't know, actually, because there's a bit of a thing here. Oh, I don't know, actually. Oh, what do you reckon? I'll see you in the morning. But I am going to head down to the university and just go, look, I think the best way we can get Elijah and Shiloh to let you open their mouths and see their teeth and, and have a proper good look around it and, and deal with Eli Shiloh's ab abscess as well, who definitely is out of his schedule because 100% that boy, half past seven until nine, wants to be training. 100%. He's, he's Even Elijah is late at night. He gets down and he goes and has his own time. Once, once Shiloh goes to sleep, Elijah likes his own time, but Shiloh likes that time in the morning. And he, yeah, yeah. And then probably both of them going swimming. So. You won't be giggling in a minute when it gets, no, because Shiloh's getting angry. Elijah, you've just got to accept that your younger brother is physically stronger than you. It's just the way that it is. Shiloh is the stronger one. And he is. Elijah is the, is the smart, switched on one, though. No headbutting and no wrestling. Right, I'm going to go and watch some... Uh, of the end of this film with my kids and settling down because I've got stuff that I need to be doing writing and setting up for Sundays for me is making sure that once all the fucking Babylon fucking system well comes at me, I can just go, ah, and they fuck off and leave me alone. Um, I don't like having to be a lion because the devil was a prowling lion, um, but I'm not sheep either. So... Um, it's really nice to know that I've got them lights out there now and it signifies exactly everything and any everything that that I stand and represent for. And I, it's like it's like the Batman beacon, isn't it? Should we go and see the Batman beacon? I'm going to see this as my Batman beacon. Should see if it's gone back on. Here we go, my Batman beacon. Are you ready? Here it goes. That's it. I don't want to get all my neighbours' things in, but hang on, it'll go again in a minute. I'll just turn the torch on to see if you can see a bit more. Shine my torch up. Ready? So in my arm holding it up for you. Ready? Go. Can you see what it is I'm looking at? You'll see it once it moves again. It's the lights down at a farm. I can't remember, Stoughton or something, I think Charlie said. Here it goes. And it will stand as three. Ready? Spinning around now. Spinning in a circle, you see? Oh, I'm not going to be 
Let's go with that. Hey there. So literally Charlie can see that from the back of her house as well. And apparently it's a farm with a gate that's got lights up. But for me, the significant, there you go, there's the three. And that uh, going to its formation. There. Hello. So for me, obviously, as I go into my meltdown <laughs> and my, I want to fucking go and strangle people, kill people, put fucking guns at people. It's never happened. I've never applied to this. Uh, district judge has retired. I do see that uh, uh, Cheryl Osbelin and Carrie Lahn have had a nice reunion since. And um, PC Stephen Lewis, maybe I'll face him one day. Uh, Stoughton Farm, um, enlightenedmoments.co.uk event, Stoughton Farm 2021. So that's what I can see there. But on the significance to me and what me and my boys have been through, from Elijah saying, Mum, what's a ghost? To then, like, us and me going, no, and we're going on a search. And for it to be Charlie that sent us a picture of her and her son stood right underneath it. And it's red and white lights. So... Um, anyway, wherever you are, Aaron and Faith know that never a day has gone by that I rest and mm -hmm. until the truth sets you free. I'm your mum, always will be, forever will be, never leave you, never forsake you. You were born in my womb, you were knitted in my soul, you were created within my spirit. You are a child of me, a child of the Lord. Aaron, you are crossing over to coming 13 and, uh... Faith 12. Wherever the lights may be, know that I will be watching and uh, hope to get to see you dancing in the streets. <laughs>